Well, hi, Liz, and all of posterity that follows, perhaps, um, and maybe my own students, for whom I might share this video in the future. Um, so yeah, Amazon's Mechanical Turk, uh, as you probably know, is a crowdsourced fee-for-service online recruitment platform. Um, well, I use it for surveys, so for uh, online surveys, but it can also be used for um, training computer vision um, or other machine learning tasks. So to develop a training set for um, uh, machine learning tasks, generally uh, humans are used to tag things so that the you know AI can then learn to use it. Um, I've never used it for that purpose. Uh, the name of MTurk, the name MTurk comes from this fellow here who was the mechanical Turk of the 1800s, the automaton that was magically able to play chess uh, well because there was this guy hidden inside. <laughs> so the idea here is that uh, Amazon's doing a sort of tongue in cheek homage to a, um, um, a ruse that was created. So what Amazon allows, what MTurk uh, for short, um, and I'll use the terms uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk and MTurk synonymously, and I'll use the term workers and perhaps Turkers synonymously. So workers or Turkers are the folks on uh, MTurk that uh, complete human intelligence tasks like surveys um, or other things that I just mentioned. Um, how they do that is through the worker interface for MTurk. Oops, hang on a sec. So that looks like this. And I would suggest that if you don't have a MTurk, if you don't have any experience with MTurk, uh, probably the best place to start would be to sign up for an account at worker.mturk.com. So this is me logging in using my junk email address. Um, yeah, that's right. Let's see. Um, okay. Nine to four. So what uh, workers see when they uh, log into worker.mturk.com, which is where they uh, complete hits and they and then get paid for them, are the hits that are uh, available to them in white or those that they don't uh, yet qualify for, but might in whatever this beige color is. So the qualification for this that's being requested is a master's qualification, which we'll talk about in a second, but which I'll say now is um, largely thought to be a waste of time. Uh, and then it looks like that this requester, so Tamale over here, um, has a pretest that uh, is necessary to complete. And if I wanted to, I could request the qualification for that. But that these are literal workers. So these are the requesters. These are the accounts of the um, MTurk uh, requesters, people who are seeking to get participation in their task, their human intelligence tasks hits. And I'm logged in as an MTurk worker right now. It's worth mentioning too that um, if you do want to play around on worker.mturk.com, Sign in using your real Amazon account. So Amazon runs Amazon.com. You know the 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 capitalistic delivery service. Uh, <laughs> and you know, of course, AWS. They also run MTurk, and these things are integrated in a way that maybe we'll talk about in a little bit too, regarding um, qualifications that Amazon already knows about you, largely because of your shopping habits, I would presume. Um, or perhaps because of your um, credit profile. So as a worker now, if I wanted to take this market research survey and get paid a penny for it, if I want, I can preview it as a worker, as a human with alleged intelligence to complete a task. So generally what's provided first is a little description here. And then if I accept it, I can go on to that. If I want to skip it, I can. 
what I generally do, because I'm not, um, there's, it's, it's a reputational based system from a worker perspective, as well as a requester perspective. But the idea is that um, if you accept the task as a worker, you're expected to complete it rather than drop out. Because if you drop out, you might have a reputational impact from the requester who says, nope, I'm not going to pay you for completing half of my survey and then dropping, dropping out of it. Um, and we'll talk about the implications of that um, in a little bit as well. Does that make sense, Liz? So like as a worker, I'm logged in to be able to do any of the tasks in white or qualify for those that are in beige. It's a bit like um, a literal job board. At first, I thought you were being figurative. <laughs> okay. A literal job board with like stack overflow or something uh, point system. Kind yeah. Of character and ethos point system. Yeah, that's a great observation. It is kind of like that. And the reputational side of things is um, like that in the sense of uh, you might not qualify to make a post or make a comment um, on Stack Overflow. Um, and you have to work your work your way up, essentially, right? So you might want to play around with that. We probably won't revisit this. I guess it's also worth mentioning, maybe just because it exists and if you get into MTurk, you might find out about it, is that there's a sandbox site for both the MTurk uh, worker side as, well, maybe not anymore. Uh, let me try the requester side. There isn't a sandbox for. Huh, okay, good. Glad I learned something new today. The sandbox seems like it's taken offline or maybe I'm getting the URL wrong. Scratch that. The idea of the sandbox was around the idea of having sort of a um, uh, developmental site to be able to check out your work before you launch it on, on MTurk. Um, so the requester side is where we as researchers or market researchers or uh, AI folks who want to be able to um, train uh, our machine learning um, algorithms it's where we log in. So it's requester.mturk.com. I already have an account, so I will log into my requester account. This is the page that's displayed um, initially. There's some um, UX decisions here that I don't think Amazon did exactly right, like putting a tiny little login up here. But the requester login, once you do it, let me sign out of that and actually sign back in. So for the requester account, what I use as my login is this, you know, Amazon hack where you can um, add a plus sign after your actual login. So my actual login is from a junk account is this, because I want to be able to um, filter the incoming uh, emails that I get based on this longer alias. It still goes to my junk email account. It just shows up as going to uh, the the Gmail account with the plus after after the login. So I sign into the account, and since I've used it before, I get a whole bunch of um, previous hits, human intelligence tasks that I've created, some for myself, some for students. Um, and to get us going, I'll just I'll launch a, a project just to try to work in the past, but you know. We'll see if it works again. The default that, so these are all the options that you can um, essentially program within um, MTurk. You can use, I know you can use Python. I don't know Python, so I don't use any of the other ones. The ones that I use is just the survey link to conduct surveys. It's the default. Another um, user interface decision that I think is dumb is that when you are at this landing page, if you want to create a survey link, it looks like to the uninitiated that there's something that I'm supposed to do here. You have to scroll down to the orange button that says create project. So when you create the project, the new project, you are presented with a variety of fields. I'm gonna copy and paste these over from um, a previous iteration that I've used before. 
give it an internal project name so this doesn't display on worker.mturk.com. On 0129. So this is for a um, survey that's dubbed an uh, intuitive physics test. I'm going to give it that title, which is broadcast to um, MTurk workers, as is the description. I'm going to provide some keywords so that in the event, I don't know how frequently it's done, but um, on the worker side, you can search for uh, what you're interested in. If you've got a particular bent on things you're interested in. in, my experience, physics tests are not one of them, but this is just for illustrative purposes. Uh, as a reward for response, gener uh, everybody has a different opinion. People say that 20 cents is typical. Others say 25. Others who have grants might give a dollar. The important thing to notice though is that the reward for response, if I type in 20, that's $20 that I'm paying. So just be aware of your decimal point. I myself for these purposes, I'm just gonna pay a penny for completion of this uh, 20 question physics test. We'll take a look at what the physics test looks like before we launch it. And so what's um, this interfacing with the Am an Amazon account that's credited or Right, so I'm logged in right now um, using my actual Amazon uh, account credentials, but set up such that instead of showing up as my, in fact, it's, it's worth a, so if you just use your um, actual buying and shipping Amazon account to uh, log in, what you'll end up with is your name right here. Maybe you're okay with that. Maybe you're okay with, uh, you know, your 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 uh, Amazon requester account showing that you are whoever your real name is because it's the name that's associated with your, you know, it's where Amazon ships you stuff. I myself, however, am. I don't care about my own research having my name here, but I realized that students can be idiosyncratic. So what I advise is when you set up your Amazon account, you use the, the Gmail hack of your Amazon login with a plus sign and then put requester or mturk or something like that, because you're essentially using your Amazon account, but setting up a new account just for mturk, which allows you to create an a name that isn't, in my case, double A on the worker side, but on the requester side is quantified results, some generic acne sounding research project. Um, no workers know anything more about you than just whatever name appears here, but you know, all, there's wackos that some people are concerned about. Um, I have had student i've never had a student harassed or anything like that but i have had a student emailed by a worker giving some dog and dog ate my homework kind of story about i did it but i didn't do it like you wanted me to do it and can you please pay me my 10 cents and can you venmo it to me and it's like okay if it's really important to venmo me 10 cents and you feel okay with that uh go ahead and do it student it turns out you can't venmo anything less than a dollar so, you know, it's like just all this like nonsense that I'd rather avoid. So for my MTurk worker account, and we'll look at you know, time providing, we'll look at essentially what that looks like setting up a MTurk requester account. Um, but it's the one time that you can plausibly create a name that isn't your name with regard to what shows up uh, on the hit. So. When we launch this hit, it'll show up as quantified results as being the requester rather than mining. But this is the interface. Requester.mturk.com is the interface to create a job listing on the worker.mturk.com side of things. So I'm just going to pay a penny. I've done this in the past before, and don't ask me why. I've gotten more people to complete it for a penny than for five cents. <laughs> Might not be. We might not get any today, but we'll see. 
Um, time allotted per worker, it's essentially how long once they begin, they have to complete it. I've always left it at a default of an hour. Um, time tests to me don't make a lot of sense, um, but you also don't want somebody to go away and have a sandwich and come back and be like, oh, what was this survey about? Maybe half an hour is the right time for you. Maybe 15 minutes is the right time for you. What I would do, what I would recommend is that however long you think the survey will take to complete, presuming we're talking surveys here. So this is my Qualtrics account, which we'll link to this intuitive physics test for. When, you, when and only when you create a new project and it hasn't yet begun in Qualtrics, it'll give you an estimate of how long it takes to complete. If you've already got a survey that you've developed in Qualtrics and you forget how long it is going to take, you can create a copy of the project and it'll give an estimate based on the number of items, how long it thinks it would take to complete the survey. It says four minutes. I'll go along with that. The reason that I'm going along with it, the reason why it's useful to know is because in the description up here, so the, the job listing for MTurk workers, I'm telling them a couple things. I'm being very specific about how much work they have to do and how long it's gonna take. So I want to grab them with a so-called action verb. Maybe it's a lame action verb, but it's an action verb, but also let them know what to expect. Because if I dupe them into thinking like this fun and intuitive physics test is fun and intuitive to me, but actually it's, you know, this mind bending 7,000 question thing that I'm paying a penny for. And now they've committed to it. And if they don't complete this thing, they're gonna get dinged reputationally. Um, that's bad juju. So I wanna avoid that by telling the worker what to expect. Survey expires in is with regard to how long how, the amount of time that I'm willing to have the survey show up on worker.mturk.com until I get the number of responses I'm looking for. Um, generally, just like maybe on a job board, the longer something's up, the further it shows up, the further it shows up in the list because the new the new postings show up first. Uh, with my own students, I do I leave the surveys up for either seven days as a default or 14 days, but that's a logistical matter regarding how often I meet with them. So if it's up for 14 days, when I reconnect with them um, in two weeks after launching, we can take a look at their data. So the decision here is really just how long you want your survey to be up with regard to the expiration, how long you're willing to leave your survey up before it um, auto closes regardless of how many responses you've got. If I get 20 responses, it closes automatically before seven days. So seven days is how long it's open until uh, if I don't get the number of responses that I'm looking for. I'm paying them a penny. I have the right to re review their work to be able to ensure that, it, that they've completed everything they're supposed to complete. Um, they're also entitled to get paid if I don't, if I don't do my due diligence. Um, I leave the auto approve and pay workers in three days. So this means if I don't check their work to make sure that they've actually completed everything that I'm paying them, the grand sum of a penny for, um, that they've uh, that they've answered all the questions essentially, right? Not dropped out of the survey. Um, if I don't do that, they get paid in three days anyhow. This is. You remember when we were looking at the worker side, there was the required, there was the idea of masters as a qualification. Um, Google it, but essentially the the bottom line is that it's arbitrary how workers get to be masters and people get their master's qualification revoked for arbitrary reasons as well. Um, it also costs you uh, to be able to have a master's qualification. So I personally skip it. Everybody has their own perspective on it. I don't know, Google it or DuckDuckGo it in my case. You can set up to five screening qualifications for workers. Um, three of them are free. There's a variety of others that are listed at requester.mturk.com that cost money. Um, Amazon always gets paid um, something out of your, and we'll see what the pay structure looks like in a second once we get once we get to launch it. 
Um, master's qualifications cost you 5% on top of whatever you're paying them. And then there's a variety of things that Amazon knows about at least some of the workers um, that are on MTurk already. Uh, again, this is what I, some of these qualifications like your age, I would presume they get from your Amazon account or your credit card because you have to link a bank account of some sort as a worker and as a, and as a requester, you have to link a bank account of some sort to be able to get paid as a worker or to offer a reward, a fee um, to your uh, MTurk workers. So if you wanna take a look at the premium qualifications built into MTurk, it's at requester.mturk.com slash pricing. What I recommend is always having a hit approval rate. So this is based on that idea of its reputational system, that that approval rate should be at least 90%. Some people say 95, some say 99. The idea is that on occasion, people are gonna get their work on a hit as a, as a worker rejected. Um, so I have never said it to 100% before, but I wanna make sure that they, uh, the main thing I'm trying to rule out through this qualification and um, another one that follows is I don't want somebody just signing up for a, for a worker.mturk.com account um, ad nauseum like a bot uh, and then completing work just to get pennies and Google it. There's a lot of um, perspectives on the degree to which bots are present and ways in which they can be countered on MTurk and other platforms. The next I'll use is location. This is free also. Generally, you want to use United States. So it's all countries alphabetical until you get to United States. And then after that, it's the US states. And then after that, it goes back to alphabetical. Kind of curious, but kind of makes sense since most MTurk requesters are in the United States. Um, I've heard arguments from uh, MTurk workers saying, hey, don't forget us about, about us Canadians too, eh? So if you wanted to be magnanimous and have Canadians as well, the argument being that Canadians are um, present in respectable numbers on MTurk and they speak English. That's the main, they largely speak English like we largely speak English. Um, allegedly, according to, do I have the article open? According to this article, the majority of MTurk workers, as of the writing of this article, at least whenever that was, uh, were from the United States and India. Um, they were approximately 65% female and 60% older than 30. The typical household income was between 40 and $60,000 and about three quarters of them had a master's, uh, excuse me, had a bachelor's degree. So in general, they've already got money. They're doing this for fun, not for the, not to make, you know, make a living off of being an MTurk worker, like you'll find plastered all over the uh, Amazon itself. We'll sell you books on that. For the sake of argument, I'm gonna skip using Canadians for right now. Um, but what I do wanna choose is, the, is a third premium, uh, excuse me, third qualification is that they've had it, they've done at least 50 hits. Again, this is to screen out, hopefully screen out bots and at least screen out actual humans who just signed up and have never, never done a, a hit before. You can also use premium qualifications. <clears throat> so this is the same as the list that we were just looking at. Um, among them, among the most desired and the, and the most not present uh, concerns ethnicity. So if you are in a situation where you wanna recruit people based on ethnicity or really anything, it's not listed here. Um, unless you have a set of workers who you've already screened for ethnicity. And again, you know, I'm not quite sure how you do that in a definitive manner, but you'd have to do something like, oh, as your the title, calling all Martians, you know, or like fill in the blank with whatever you want to recruit if it's not on the list. 
um, I'll hopefully be able to um, point towards where it is that you can um, build up your own internal list of qualifications of things that Amazon doesn't provide as a fee-based service. When you use any kind of qualifications, um, you must set the task visibility on worker.mturk.com either to be private or hidden. It's not as nefarious as it sounds. Um, the idea is that public conflicts, it, it's a 404 error with regard to having qualifications. You can't require that people ha have meet certain qualifications to participate in it to be considered public in the Amazon sense. You can set it private in the sense of when I was on um, worker.mturk.com, the hit that shows up in beige or whatever here, I can see because they've set it as private. I can see their task, but I have to meet the qualifications first. Generally, I just do hidden though. Like I don't particularly see with this set of qualifications, any necessity for people to know that if they can only complete the 50th hit, they get to get my penny, you know, or my five cents or my dollar or $10 or whatever I'm willing to pay. Um, but it's a, it's a individual decision. If you want to be able to allow people to see your hit, but not complete it until they create some kind of qualification, fine. You can do it that way. Um, <clears throat> so after you get through the first of three pages, and then it's a lot of um, repetition that's here. Hit the, the orange button is always next. Think of it that way. Save just saves it, but it doesn't continue on to the next screen. This is a WYSIWYG area, that uh, an editor that allows you to um, create whatever instructions you want to the worker. The way that this looks is this is the description that they're providing me, um, how I'm setting it up, what I do with my students at least, is that I delete the first two sentences. You can customize it however you want, but the first two sentences in the default that's present in the, in the editor is, we're conducting an academic survey about social networks. We need to understand your opinions about social networks. Amazon's providing this to you as just like an example of what you might want to say, but customize it to your own use. Um, in my own work with my own students, I just have them delete the first two sentences because yes, they are taking a survey. At the end of the survey, yes, they'll receive a code to paste into the box below to receive credit for taking the survey. This is what the worker is going to see, right? So this is what you're telling them as a requester about your project. Make sure to leave the window open as you complete the survey. When you're finished, you'll return here to paste the code into the box. This is the said box. This is Amazon talking to me now as a requester saying, make sure you give them a unique code to complete to put in that box there. And I'll, I'll speak to that, how that's done in a second, but I don't wanna broadcast this tip to Amazon to me, to my workers, since this is my job listing. This is my public facing ad. So if you hit, if you select it and delete it once, you're left with the gray box. You hit delete once more and you get rid of the gray box. This is the link to the survey. Amazon's again saying, obviously, this is the um, example that, that they're giving me. What we'll be launching is this intuitive physics test. So you can use Qualtrics or really any platform, but what you want to be able to do is to be able to request the MTurk workers uh, ID. So as a worker, where go? as an MTurk worker, your let me refresh. Your worker ID appears up here again, super tiny in Amazon's parent style. If you click it, you can copy it. And what workers the workers just know to do this, that they copy their worker ID and then if requested, paste it in the box of the of the survey. So the way it looks, the way the survey looks when it's being completed, this is the very first page. And I, as a worker, would go paste. And then I'd go on to the instructions and then further on to the actual questions. It doesn't so much matter what our, this particular survey is. 
What does matter though, is that if you're, if you're going with Amazon's good recommendation to be able to have a survey completion code, you have to program, uh, there might be other ways to do it in other platforms, I use Qualtrics. The way it's done in Qualtrics is through the survey flow. So once you've set up your survey in Qualtrics, when you hit survey flow, what you, let me see if I can recreate this. It's been a while since I've just used this template. So in survey flow, uh, if I had just finished making the survey, what I'll see at first is the default question box block. So these are the items in the survey plus the instructions and the request for the MTurf worker ID. You create a new element and choose embedded data. Um, call it random ID. We'll double check in a second. And then hit set a value. And what this code does is uh, tells Qualtrics to create a random integer between 10,000 and however many this is. One, two, three, 10 million. So it'll randomly generate an integer between 10,000 and 10 million. 10,000 and 10 million is arbitrary. The reason that I choose it though, instead of having a low end of one, is that plausibly an MTurk worker, when they go back to this page and provide their survey code, I would think, maybe I'm wrong, but people will just like mash a couple buttons on their, um, if, they're, if they're faking it, they're gonna mash a couple buttons and the, consider that their completion code. Yeah. I don't know whether this is particularly uh, a great way to help thwart that or not, but it's what I do. Does the code have to be different for each MTurk worker completing, or could you just put at the end, the code is all done, and then everyone just types in all done? You could do that too, yeah. This is what, um, and you would, in that case, you wouldn't build it into the survey flow like this, but rather you would, you know, go down and create a block at the end that says, thanks, your, your completion code is all done or whatever. Okay. If you do use this approach, you want to set the survey termination options. So you'll notice that you don't see any, in fact, if we previewed it and went through all of the items, uh, we would see the completion code, but we don't see it here in the layout because it's built into this little link here at the bottom. And this is where I'm going to random ID. Yeah, so this is where I was, I should have checked this beforehand. Let me cancel out of this because I'm going to launch this live. Um, and it's going to yell at me if I don't do it this way. So sorry if it was random ID. Okay, great. So where it's set at the end is in the survey termination options through that, again, just to revisit it, the custom end of survey message, and that's where they get their uh, interc random ID. Um, now I'll launch it through distributions. I can get the anonymous URL. I'm just gonna accept the, I'm just gonna copy that. And what I recommend to my students, because it's awfully difficult to do this with 20 or 22 students in a way that guarantees that those that aren't more technologically challenged uh, don't also have problems. What I have them do is delete that there, leave the cursor there, because this is another UX thing. If you get out of it and you come back into it, students often delete and then they they get rid of the box or something like that. Like, I, I don't know. Anyhow, when working with my own students, what I have them do is, oh gosh, now I'm myself a Luddite. I have them paste it as plain text first. So this is just, this is not a hyperlink URL right now. 
Then I have them highlight it, copy it back to the clipboard, although it's already on the clipboard, paste in the URL, and then go to target. And this is the most important part that I don't, it's, you guys, you guys know that to do stuff like this, my students often don't, um, to make sure that it opens in a new window. Because if it doesn't, they're not able to do the thing that you're telling them to do here. So, so far so good. We can then preview it. There's a lot of previews built into MTurk. This is what the worker will see when it's launched live. This is a good place for checking that you've got it actually opening in a new window, and it is. So this is the live survey. I'll hit finish. And so this is the hit that I just created. These are the hits that I've done in the past, most recently in the past. And I'll hit publish batch. So this is where I'm actually launching it live. It shows me a preview once again. It reminds me of who I'm showing up as as a requester, what I'm paying them. Tasks available mean how many, not how many responses I'm looking for, but rather how many um, hits are in this batch. That's one. They have an hour to complete, and they've got these um, qualifications set up. I hit next. It often requires you to log in again. I don't know why. It's a security check kind of thing, I guess, that Amazon does. And now is where I get the price breakout. So at a penny with 20 tasks, we're talking 20 cents, obviously. Amazon's fee, I believe, is 40% of whatever your price is with the, the minimum value that they're going to 40% you on is being 5 cents or 4 cents, I think. Four, four or five cents. Anyhow, there's some like if you want to game MTurk, four cents is apparently the price to pay because it reduces the fees to Amazon. Um, most people that are collecting data through MTurk probably don't so much care about that. But with the um, total reward of 20 cents, the fees to Amazon, uh, it's 40 cents, but I have to purchase a dollar minimum. So this is, you can think of it like a, it's a prepaid account. You, it's a pre-funded account. So I'm putting a dollar into this hit so that Amazon can withdraw it and pay the workers. I've already logged in and used this before. So I've already got my credit card set up. If, if you're new to this, you won't, but there's only three things that are requested here, your number, your name, and your expiration date. Um, and that's enough to populate the credit card. So what happens to the 60? It is still there the next time you create another, or is it only good for this hit? Yeah, so if you, well, good, great, thank you for asking that. So one, the extra credit will remain in the account. So if I launch the hit again, it'll withdraw the 40 cents from the 60 cents that are credited still. It's also more likely that you're going to pay more than a penny, and it's more than likely that you're going to um, request data from uh, more than 20 participants, because if you're actually doing a research study, you'll want to use an a priori power analysis to determine the minimum sample size. To my recollection, 20 is never the minimum sample size, like, I don't know, multiple regression with uh, I don't know, a multiple regression with uh, uh, looking for a power of 80% and an alpha of 0.5. Uh, just doing it real quick in G power, which is worth checking out if you don't have prior experience with. The minimum sample size for that would be 68. So if I had two predictor variables and one outcome variable in a multiple regression study, 68 would be the number. Um, if you don't, so remember that the hit, we've set it up to be available for a week if we're able to, it, it, we're willing to leave it up for a week until we get to 20. It'll close before a week 
if we get to 20. It's also possible that it'll be up for a week and I don't get all the responses that I want, which means that my pre-funded account isn't drawn down from in the amount that's fully funded. You can contact Amazon customer service and ask for a refund to your credit card of any residual monies, which is relevant, obviously, if you're paying more than a penny for 20 respondents. If you're, I mean, students, my, my students in the past have paid on typically to do an actual research study collected on MTurk when they're willing to fund at around 15 to 25 cents. And maybe they're using one or two of these uh, premium qualifications might be anywhere from like $75 to $150. I, from as a as a professor, I justify this in, in and I've never had anybody push back on it, but um, I don't have my students buy textbooks. I use all online materials. Um, anyhow, for for those for those wondering, the last thing that I'm here to is the um, confirmation screen. But thank you for spending forty cents for giving us this presentation today. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so now the survey is live. This is, once this goes from purple to yellow, um, it indicates that the survey is up on worker.mterp.com. The 100% published means that it's, it's kind of a weird way to say it, but it means it's 100% available on worker.mterp.com they would be better off to say live on worker.mturk.com. That's what it means. The submitted frequency here is how many people have actually completed the hit so far. So I've asked for 20. What does that mean? When, I, when the first person completes it, it would say 5% and 10%. Same deal here. This auto refreshes, so it's always live. Um, everything else we've already talked about. So let me jump out of here for a second. Who knows if we'll get any hits in the next couple of minutes or any bites, or nibbles, I guess I should say. Also from the manage side of things. So these are the main three main tabs you can think of in the top. Create is what we just were on. Manage is where we um, review hits to approve them. Or if we don't, they're auto paid in, in this case, three days. And developer is up for all you coders out there. Um, it's where you I don't know, do stuff with the API. Um, in the workers link are folks that I've collected data from in the past. I don't know how many are in here, a bunch. Qualification types, this is where, as I mentioned, I have students who are interested in collecting data from people of certain ethnicities and you can only, call it, calling all, Martians or whatever um, approach, or you can pre-qualify people by appending to your survey at the end of your survey um, demographic items with the intention of collecting that data. You, you want to target them for recruitment in the future. So I have, oops, I have a set of demographic items that I've used, that I've created. You can use Qualtrics base library. You can use qualifications you wanted yourself. The way it works within Qualtrics is that you select the range of items that you want to import, you import them. And then these are all the kind of things that I, my students actually could plausibly be interested in recruiting for based on my experience with their previous interests would be things like location, ethnicity, political orientation or party, marital status, uh, sexual identification, um, how much school they've completed. The how much school they've completed is relevant because although you can uh, use a premium MTurk qualification to be able to get at just these two distinctions, or three, I guess I should say, is that um, why pay Amazon for something that you might already have data for yourself? So even though maybe marital status you can pay for, 
by collecting it through a survey, I'm able to not have to pay for a premium qualification in, in the future. Can you do a hit that is just a pre qualifier? Yeah, exactly. Right. So I have launched, set aside the intuitive physics test. I've launched this demographic survey just at the demographic hit. Please complete, the, and what I'll say is something like, please complete the following, however many items it says, let's say 20 demographic items if interested in qualifying for future hits. Because you could do that, for example, like with teachers, you could use, are they in education from Amazon to get started? But then if you only wanted science teachers, you could pre-qualify them through this, and then you would have their account for the later. And then when you do it that way, when you set it up, how do you say, I just want people with these account numbers to have it available? Yeah, so this is the key is that this is just, um, this is probably obvious to many, but maybe not. So if you're looking just for science teachers, the way to set up the question isn't, are you a science teacher? The way to set up the question would be, please indicate which field you teach it within. Like you might set it, set, it, set, set up this imagined hit to be um, demographic survey for teachers. That might be enough to at least get you in the door with hopefully recruiting people who self-identify as teachers. It doesn't prevent people who aren't teachers from not, but let's say you're willing to go on a level of, there's always a level of trust that has to occur first with regard to creating screening questions like we're talking about now. So if you're willing to start at the broad umbrella category of teachers, maybe the item reads, uh, in what field do you teach? You're only interested in people that teach gaming or science. So everybody that checks everything else out you're not immediately now interested in. Maybe you aren't, maybe you're, you're cool with knowing that the person teaches cooking, um, but not for this particular project. So you've still got that demographic about them. It's just not the one you're seeking to target in the future. Doug, so, Ryan, I gotta go, but thank you. Sure, yeah. thanks, Liz. Thank thanks. Bye, Liz, so, see you next week. Bye. Okay. Bye. So that's what the qualify creating the qualification types are. These are my self-created qualifications that I get to create a name for and that I get to include the workers for who have previously completed a demographic or, or maybe not demographic. Maybe you want to say like my best workers because they're the most diligent somehow or spend the longest on your hit or something like that. So you went in there and you put those 38 IDs into that. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's useful. Um, I have a student who that would be useful for potentially. Yeah. So the other thing, this is more me to, me to you as a teacher who might be teaching with this in the future. The thing to know when you create these qualification types. So this is great that I've identified 38 Asian self-identified Asian Americans and a hundred self-identified African Americans. Obviously, if I were to recruit them in the future, I'd want to include an open-ended ethnicity question in the survey to have a double check on, well, they told me they were Asian American in the past. Are they still checking that checkbox? Are they checking the checkbox that they think that I now want them to check? Yeah. So it's just sort of double, whatever the method of accounting is with the two columns thing. It's about that. Um, but so I, I, um, I run all the Qualtrics surveys in my class. I just because students, it just takes with 20, 22 students, it's just too time consuming for me to have them, if they're inexperienced with Qualtrics, create a survey. I create the surveys for them. And then I send them a collaboration read only, a collaboration read only link. So these are my former and current students work that I created and then I share with them so uh, that okay. they can paste it into MTurk. So that's just because I want it to go as smoothly as possible. I don't want them to fail, not the class, but like not succeed in the survey. I want that them to pay sense. for I want them to pay for the hit, use their own Amazon account. I, I'm 
I guess I would be okay with. I'll set it up for you and, and you pay me, but that just seems shady, you know? Like, Yeah, that makes sense. So I have them set up the hit. I give them the URL to the survey. They paste it in when they're doing the requester side of things. So you have a catalog of surveys that you've picked up over the years. Right. And therefore, I also own the demographic. I don't mean to own like I'm proud of it. I mean, it's just the fact of the matter. It's so, in your Quatrix account. Right. So I'm able to assign these qualification types because I know who's who. Yeah. The, the problem that's created here is that, well, I can create a hit in the future that seeks to use one of my own pre my own uh, qualifications that I've created. So for instance, I think it's at the bottom right here. So African-Americans that I've previously qualified. Okay. Um, uh, has been granted is what I'll say. What I can't do, while I can get the list of the MTurk worker IDs from where we just were, what I can't do is, let's say you want to use the previously identified Asian Americans worker IDs that I've had. I can give you the worker IDs, but you can't um, target them. So when I, uh, okay. me logged into my own MTurk requester account, I can target them and they'll get an invitation to participate in my survey because they previously qualified. If I gave you the same list, they wouldn't be invited, but it would show up on their MTurk worker profile. Oh, okay. Like, like that's it. Like you can't, the only way you can invite them is if you're the owner of the qualification type. Yeah, well, that's probably good though. Otherwise, people would sell those qualification pipes. Right. So that well, that's why Amazon does it is that they want to make the money rather yeah. than you know. There's discussion boards everywhere where well, hey, these this is a list of uh, twenty seven year old IT specialists or something like that. Well. Amazon would much rather you pay them 40 cents to get access to IT specialists and another 40 cents to get access to 25 to 30 year olds, you know? Well, and you still don't know if those same 38 people are still doing MTurk. Right, right. That's true too. Yeah. Right. Or they may not be doing it the week that you're doing your survey. Yeah, right. That's very true. Let's take a quick peek to see. If it's Can you oh. go? Mm -hmm. back real quick to one more thing mm -hmm. to start a new project mm -hmm. so let's say um you developed a java script thing where people would do some visual task like a psychologist would do yeah, like eye like, tracking or something. Yeah, or a Stroop test or something. Yeah. And you were then to run that, and then you were just getting their times. Which, like, which of those categories, like the survey one, I guess you could link them to anything, no matter where you put it. It doesn't yeah. have to go to a survey. It could take them to your own personal website, and you right. could have a game or something on there. But what right. have you? What are some of those other ones that are listed, that are kind of pre out of the box ones? Have you ever used like any of the, I mean, the image classification? I can guess what that is. Right. Um, but like, what is a key point or a polygon? So they're all just templates. They're not. So for instance, you can do a survey within MTurk rather than linking out. You can program. Okay, so they have their own, like basic HTML survey form tool? Not even that. It's, um, let's see, I don't know. I've only just played around with this. Let's go to the design layout if it lets me. So this is telling you that I can write in any of these languages. There's okay. like, um, like Twilio has a, a pre-slug code that you can just copy and paste and maybe customize to your own use, that kind of thing. 
So I presume this is all in just looks like HTML to me. It looks like they might have their own kind of tags that they use, like as divs or something like that. Yeah. There's this JavaScript that's somehow necessary to run the whole thing. If we were to try one of the other ones, I don't know. Let's look at something that makes absolutely no sense to us whatsoever. Polygon. So my guess it's, yeah, it's draw the box around the bird. Ah, uh, OK. Is the idea here. So this and, is kind of one set up. OK, so it's under visions, probably for machine learning purposes. Yeah. So these are okay. all just templates, you know? Okay, so but you'd you could have to do anything. Yeah. And obviously, you'd have to have, yeah, you'd have to, pro the image comes from somewhere. Where the image comes from is up to you. It's telling you that in this case, this image comes from here, the two birds. But you know, that's that comes all down to the issue of coding. I yeah. don't, I don't teach coding. Uh, well, I guess I teach R to so to an extent. I teach coding, but it really doesn't matter. You can if you're gonna if you're gonna do something custom, you may as well choose other. <laughs> you know, and just because you're going to be using all your own code anyhow that's within it. It doesn't really matter what the temp the templates only provided because it's it's like teaching you how to teaching you what you could do. It's yeah. like the first step in saying, if you want to do image classification, you dear MTurk requester can get a quick preview of what that looks like here. But you're going to have to learn how to do it yourself. Yeah. And they have, you know, links up here that helps tell you how to do that. And, you know, it's typical MTurk documentation that <laughs> uh, is thorough, but mind numbing, you know? Yeah. And it has all these sub pages and stuff. You know, everything you'd exactly expect to see, very thorough and comprehensive with regard to like AWS, but you can't just decide to do it Monday morning and launch launch it Monday afternoon unless you're a whiz or unless you already, you know, know the, the language. Okay. Both. So anyhow, I'm a little surprised, but I don't think I've gotten any responses yet. This one is always like my go-to. Ah, I have got responses. I'm up to hold on a second. So this is obviously as when you and I first talked with Ryan Kelly, he did MTurk, right? Oh yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, so that's like the, practically the first. That's the first time I understood it. Let me put it that way. Like I had heard about it, but I'm like, I don't know what that. What? Oh, he didn't even use MTurk. He used Crowdflower or something. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not sure if they're in business anymore even. Yeah, I don't either. The new one is I like... I know Prolific is... Prolific's big, yeah. Um, but I don't know what the difference is. I guess it's more focused for research purposes. Yeah, allegedly that has better quality. Like someday I'll do, I'll use it, you know. But to, to me, the idea of quality is such an arbitrary kind of thing because there's, a, there's always the weakest link that starts. Like the idea you want science teachers. Well... You could just say complete a demographic survey is the description of your hit. I'm going to cancel this just because I think I might have screwed up that <laughs> survey completion at the end. So I don't want to have to deal with responding to 20 people. By the way, when you cancel a, a hit, people that are already in the hit can still complete it. Okay. Um, but the reason that I use this crazy example of an intuitive physics test that I pay people a penny for is that I always get responses and I always get them quick. So in just six minutes and 58 seconds, eight people were willing, or, or eight bots, were willing to complete a intuitive physics test for a penny, you know? And that's, I think, the thing that really was striking to me about Ryan Kelly's project is I'm like, you collected your data in two hours? So sometimes I've had students that have gotten all their data for projects in my classes within two hours. Sometimes I've had them not be able to get any response whatsoever. And that's most, most typically, typically the case when they um, use too many premium qualifications. 
like they're counting on Amazon to be able to identify people who are fluent in basic Portuguese and are a tablet owner. And it's like, come on, I don't know. It, supposedly there's 300,000 Turkers in the world or something like that. But people who- The odds of that combination are pretty small. Right. Not that many people. Right. And even for things that you would think that perhaps Amazon has uh, an intersection of, like um, I've, I've had uh, students have a really hard time finding managers, people that are, are in the job function of managers. For whatever reason, they're either not present on MTurk or they don't, they are, but they don't like my students' projects. So in true Amazon and Netflix fashion, Amazon doesn't publish any stats. You know, they could just as easily say, right after this 50 cents, they could say 3,412 eligible workers. Yeah. But they don't. So again, this is why it's useful to build up your own internal qualifications, not just so you don't have to pay Amazon, but so that you have access to information that they might not have access to. Now that's only pertinent if you're doing more than one project, or maybe you're doing one, I'm just thinking of dissertation students or master's projects or something like that. In theory, they're not going to be a researcher while they're still enrolled in school and do multiple different projects. But what they could do would be to create a pre-screening qualification survey that's based on whatever demographics that they're searching, then create a list of people who meet those qualifications, then invite them to participate in their real survey, whatever their, or their real polygon test, you know? So how does it work? So we talked to, in our, in the podcast, the guy at Harvard who did the gamey game theory stuff. And if I remember right, he used MTurk, but he had people doing a game theory exercise against each other where they're yeah. betting against each other. Yeah. How do you do it if you want to have the people, like two people completing it at the same time? Is that like another advanced level of complexity, I would assume to say, I don't want just you there by yourself doing it. You have to be there when someone else is there to compete against them. Yeah, so that was, who was that? Was that Luke Chang? No, no. That, this was year one. Um, I remember oh. the picture, he's with his dog out in the snow. I wanna say his name is Mike. Um, I think he was- Adam social. Morris? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's why I'm thinking that um, Morris. So right, you think... can decide if you want to keep recording, by the way, or if No, I, I do. I do. This is still interesting, possibly interesting, possibly useful in the future, I guess is a better way to put it. Maybe it doesn't matter if it's interesting or not. So I'm looking at his page now. What yeah. he did is that the game that he created, it was created on a third party service. It wasn't built within MTurk. And he's a big surprise. It's already down by now. Yeah. This was it was ago. Java, if I remember right. Yeah. So what most people seem to do is that they, oh, and this is actually kind of useful too, presumably. Yeah. So this is the code that he used for his game that he hosted on whatever that web fractional price it, it site is. It seems that most people, um, build their thing, whatever their thing is on another site and then just embed it within MTurk if they don't want people to pop out of it to a different window. Um, but that's just my guess. I, I don't, I, you could- but I guess, how do you do the, you have to wait for someone else to show up? I guess they just wait and then they don't get their code until someone else shows up to compete against them in the game. Yeah, well, yeah. Listen to Adam Adam's talk. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a question of coding. That's a question bigger than Qualtrics. That's about how do you write a program that puts people in a hopper until another person joins. You know. Yeah, a, but I guess it doesn't matter to MTurk because all MTurk wants is the number they get at the end. 
So you just have to explain it in the hit information that the task yeah. itself only takes five minutes, but you may have to wait 10 minutes for someone else to show up to compete right. against. Right. And the survey completion code thing too. So I guess maybe since we're still recording, it might be worth sharing a little bit about that. So we see when we look at, so this is under the tab that's managed and then I'm at results. And I've canceled this task. So let me just click on results again to see if the screen looks any different. Yeah. I don't want to spend that 40 cents. <laughs> right. Now you only spent 20 of it. Yeah. What it, like I said, what it's really about is I think I might have missed, messed up the survey completion code thing in Qualtrics because I was re, I deleted it and redid it. Yeah. So now I only have to follow up with nine people if I if I did screw that up. But when you click review results, so this is a now considered a completed hit in the sense of like the task that I created is now um, offline on worker. These are the workers. These are the cert it looks like I did present, you know, like if they were going to fake oh, yeah, it. Yeah, you did it right. Yep. Yeah. So if they were going to fake it, they could have, um, presumably they would have just matched letters and numbers. So that it's all numeric gives me a little bit of hope that I did this correctly. Then I download, then what you would do is download the CSV. Let me show my whole screen, my desktop rather for this one. So what I'm downloading after it processes it is a CSV file that contains the MTurk workers ID and maybe some other metadata. So there's a bunch of junk in here that I don't particularly care about. Um, what I do care about is what their MTurk worker ID is. Maybe it's the last thing. Uh, worker ID. Yep. So I care about that. And I care about this, the survey completion code. Assuming that I'm spending lots of money, you know, like I'm paying a yeah. penny. I'm not going to review people to see whether they did a good job or not. Take the yeah. penny, you know. But what if I, you had um, questions about whether or not they had done a good job. Or completed or the they, whole thing even. Yeah. You know. Oh, so now you go into your data. Right. You should see nine completions. Well, I've used this before, so there's actually 209 or something like that. But the most recent ones, the nine or 10 perhaps that are still in progress, that because remember when you cancel it, it doesn't disallow them from completing. So they're still yeah. taking the, the penny test. If I were to export this data set, I generally use numeric choices. I don't choose any of these other options here myself. It's for whatever reason, it seems like it takes Qualtrics an eternity to, oh, look, well, that was fast for Qualtrics. Yeah, I've had that issue with Qualtrics too. And then when I look in here, well, they weren't all completed, but what I would do is check against the random ID that whatever random ID is pasted here and whatever MTurk worker ID is pasted here in the spreadsheet. So this is the yep. first question of the survey was what's your MTurk ID? Then there were the directions and there were the questions. So there's pro somebody probably has a script out there that combines these two spreadsheets and checks this worker ID against that completion code in both places. Yeah. But like I said, I do it just because 